Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of concrete. Uh, so it's basically, it says uh, concrete is the most important material in civil engineering, and the concrete compressive strength is a highly nonlinear function of age and ingredients. So we are given uh, the age and the ingredients of a given mixture of concrete, and we're going to try to pr uh, predict the compressive strength of uh, a given recipe. So uh, let's hop into it. Uh, we will note it said that the function uh, that um, the compressive strength is a highly nonlinear function. So we're going. Uh, we can assume that nonlinear uh, models will perform better than linear models. But we'll see. Um, I'm going to use a whole bunch of different models today, uh, and we're going to see which one performs the best, and then we're going to try to optimize that one after we've compared all of them. So let's go ahead and import those. Um, Actually, I'm not using Kfold, but I am using uh, Grid Search CV, which is uh, a way to optimize models across a grid of hyperparameters. You can also use it with estimators, but we're not going to do that. Um, so let's actually load in the data using pandas.readcsv. And we can grab the file path right over here, concrete data, um, paste it in, and take a look. All right, it's a very simple data set. We only have a thousand examples and uh, nine columns, the last of which we are trying to predict. Uh, let's get a little information about it so we can see if we have any missing values. And 1,030 total entries, and we have 1,030 non-nulls in every column. So uh, no missing values and also no object columns. So everything is about ready to go. I think the last thing, we'll, the only thing we'll have to do is scale the data. Uh, so let's start pre-processing. This is going to be very brief. Uh, we're going to create a function called pre-process inputs. Um, and this will allow us to sort of see what we're doing to the data before and after. So I'm going to start by creating a copy of the data frame. That's what I'm passing in, df. And then we're going to return the data frame at the end. Uh, so if I have data before, uh, and then we can call x. x will be the, pre the process version of data. Uh, that will be pre-process inputs and passing in data. Uh, then we can take a look at x, and now anything we do in the function, we can see the results down here. So let's say I want to split uh, the target column, uh, CSMPA, uh, off from the rest of the data set. Then we can go and store uh, that column in y. So y will be df sub CSMPA. Make a copy of it. And then x will be the rest of the data, so everything except CSMPA. So df.drop, csmpa, uh, and I'm dropping from axis 1, which is the column axis, making a copy as well, and now I want to return x and y after that. Uh, this way, we'll get two values, uh, and we can see x, this is everything except the column, and then y, sorry, not with a question mark, uh, y is just the target column, csmpa. Okay, so, um, the next thing, and I think pretty much the last thing we have to do is scale x. So uh, to scale it uh, means let's give each column a very similar range of values. Right now we have the age ranging from like a few tens to hundreds. Over here we have it going all the way up to thousands. Um, so we, we want to sort of uh, create uh, standardize the data so that uh, well, we're going to do it with a standard scaler so that that's going to give each column a mean of zero and a variance of 1. So let's uh, scale x with a standard scalar. So uh, scalar will equal standard scalar. This I'm getting from sklearn. There are other scalars we can use, but we're just going to use the standard, uh, which again will give a mean of 0 and a unit variance. So we can fit the scalar um, to the train set. Uh, we don't want to scale y. Uh, y is what we're trying to predict, so it's best to leave that in whatever units it was originally um, uh, encoded in. And we're going to try to uh, just scale x, but the thing is, uh, we want to actually do a train test split first. So train test split. Um, reason for this is because we want to fit the scalar to just the train set. Uh, in practice, if you were given real data, uh, you had some data to train on, uh, and then you were given more data after uh, to test the model on, you wouldn't have time to go and train and fit the scalar again to this new test data. So if we're using an artificial train test split like this, uh, we'll use the train test split function from sklearn. 
Uh, then uh, we're only going to want to fit the scalar to the train set, and we're going to transform both the train and test set based on the fit we have just to the train. So uh, this is going to return, return x train, x test, y train, and y test. Uh, let's also specify how big we want these uh, train size. Sorry, this is the wrong train size. Uh, we'll do 70%. So 70% of the data will go into x train and y train. And the other 30% will go into x test and y test. And then we will include a random state as well. So random state uh, will just ensure that every time we run this notebook, we'll get the same split. Um, and this function actually shuffles the data by default. Uh, so this, by including a random state, this can be any number, it'll just ensure that the shuffle and the split are always done the same way. So now we have our train and test set. Let's fit the scalar to just the train set. All right. Um, and then we're going to want to transform both x train uh, and x test using the fit that we have just to x train. So x train equals scalar dot train. Uh, sorry, scalar dot transform x train. And uh, x test is going to equal scalar dot transform x test. Uh, now instead of returning x and y, let's return all four: x train, x test, y train y test that is not say train okay there we go let's get let's actually pick up those values over here x train x test y train and y test all right we'll look at x train so it's no longer a pandas data frame so it's not as nice to look at uh, let's go in and actually turn this back into a data frame so, so the scalar.transform function returns a numpy array that's what we're seeing here so if we go and call pandas.dataframe, we can turn it back into a data frame, uh, but uh, if I leave it as it is now, you'll see we ha we lose the column names uh, because we, we've lost them once we use this function. So what we can do to fix that is go in and type columns equals xtrain.columns. Uh, so this here is referencing the xtrain that came before, so it's going to use the columns uh, before uh, the xtrain changes. So uh, it'll use the old columns this way, old column names. All right, let's do the same thing for x test. Uh, this can be test. I mean, this could really just be x. They're both the same uh, column names, but it doesn't matter. Uh, let's now create. Uh, we're, we're turning them both back into data frames, and here we go. We have the original data set, uh, data frame, with the names properly um, in place. But you can see that each column now has been scaled to have a mean of zero. So if I check the mean of each column, uh, you can see each one is very close to zero. Uh, and I can check the variance as well. They should be very close to one. And so they are. All right, so now that they all take on the same range of values, uh, we are ready to feed this into our model. Note that y train still takes on, uh, still has not been scaled, and it's, it's just in its original form. All right. So next, we can start model selection. So model selection is the process of uh, training a whole bunch of models and then evaluating uh, which ones are doing better than others. And we're just going to do a very basic model selection today. We're just going to actually just pick, handpick a bunch of models and train them and see which does the best with the default parameters. And then we'll pick the one that performed the best and we'll try to refine it to make it perform even better. So let's create a dictionary of models. Uh, this is going to map an, the name of the model to the actual instance of the classifier. Uh, sorry, regressor. We're doing a regression task here. So we'll, uh, I actually imported a whole bunch of them at the top that we're going to use. So I'm just going to grab that and put it here. Okay. All right, so we're going to start adding the models. Um, so linear regression is our first model. Uh, this is just a standard linear regression uh, so it's going to be an instance of sklearn's linear regression, uh, like that. Then we're going to do ridge regression, which is linear regression with L2 regularization. It's called the ridge uh, model. And so let me just, actually I'll call this L2 ridge regression. All right, then we're going to have uh, support vector machines. One we're going to use a linear kernel, and the other we will use an RBF, or radial basis function kernel. Um, the RBF kernel is much better at detecting nonlinear relationships in the data. Uh, so 
uh, you can see we did say it was a highly nonlinear function, so I'm guessing the linear SVR will do much worse. Um, so support vector machine with a linear kernel, and that's going to be uh, SVR. No, no, linear SVR. And then we'll have support vector machine with a uh, uh, RBF kernel. And that will be just SVR. By default, it has the R RBF kernel in there. Then we'll have a decision tree. Decision tree regressor. Um, and we will have a neural network. That will be the MLP classifier. No, sorry, MLP regressor. Uh, and then we'll have three ensemble methods. Random forest regression. That's basically just creating a bunch of decision trees uh, in parallel and then averaging their outputs. Random forest regressor. Uh, then we'll have gradient boosting and add a boost, which are very similar. Uh, both are boosting techniques that uh, build models sequentially one after the other. Um, the um, the add a boost actually updates the weights um, of misclassified examples so that the model uh, tries harder to do um, better on examples that misclassified in the past. Uh, so we'll have gradient boosting regressor. I realize I just typed that in here. Uh, gradient boosting. And add a boost, which will be the add a boost regressor. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to indent all these so that they uh, all line up nicely. Let me just copy that in I have it before, like that. Um, and then I'm going to tr uh, fit each one to the same set of data, which is our X train, Y train. So for model, uh, I'll do for name, comma, model in models.items. So if you call items from a dictionary, it will return the key value pairs as tuples, which we can then iterate two at a time. And then we'll print, uh, we'll actually fit the model to X train, Y train. And then we will print out uh, the name of the model followed by, followed by trained. So uh, this will, we'll see, okay, all of our models are trained. Um, and now let us print out their results. So for name comma model in models.items, uh, let's print out the name followed by uh, R squared score, uh, R squared, um, and I'll display it to five decimal places. And we're gonna format that with model.score that by default returns the R squared score for regression tasks, passing in the test set. Uh, and you can see, oh, let's put a space. All right, uh, here are our, all of our models. And you can see uh, the linear uh, models performed very badly. It looks like the, actually the neural network performed the worst with an R squared of 0.42. However, it is not uh, optimized. So um, these are all with the default parameters. But it looks like gradient boosting came in first. So now let's start model optimization. So that what I mean here is we're gonna take, uh, because gradient boosting did the best, we're just gonna create a best model and we're only gonna focus on gradient boosting. Regressor. Uh, we can fit that to the train set. X train, Y train, and we can display the results. I'm just gonna copy this in. Um, so yeah, this is the same as we had before, uh, 0.90689. And this is before optimization. So what I would like to do is use uh, a, an exhaustive grid search. Uh, we can use sklearn's grid search CV um, to try to find the optimal hyperparameters to use. So uh, grid search CV takes in a model. In this case, we'll pass in best model. And it's going to take in a dictionary of parameter values to use. And this is going to be our new classifier, so-called CLF. Uh, let's define these parameter values. Uh, Basically, the more parameters you want to search for, the longer this is going to take. Uh, it is a very computationally expensive algorithm because it literally checks every possible pair. Um, so we're going to check learning rate. I'm just going to check three, and I'm not going to do too many values because I don't want this to run for so long. 
Uh, I'm going to check three learning rates. And I'm going to check, uh, we're going to try it with different number of estimators. I think by default we have 100. So we'll check with 100, we'll check with 150, we'll check with 200. And then the max depth of a given tree we can use. Uh, by default I think it's 3, so let's check 3, 4, and 5. Alright, then we're going to pass in the parameters and the model. And grid search CV, uh, if we call clf.fit on x train y train, uh, we can then find the best parameters it, it uh, gets with best params. And so that will just take a moment because it has to go and check. It's going to train a model with each for each one of these, uh, for each one of these, and for each one of these. So it's, I believe, 3 times 3 times 3 um, different models. Uh, and then when that's done, actually I'll just copy this. We're going to print out the results. This will be after optimization. Um, and this will also return the best uh, parameters after it's done. That's what I have right here. And you can see it found that using a learning rate of 0.01, a max depth of 5, and an, an, a number of estimators, 200, um, worked the best. So if we run this, uh, okay, it looks, oh, sorry, sorry, we're not checking best model here. We're going to check CLF. Uh, right, okay, we got an increase in performance. So by optimizing the hyperparameters, we actually boosted the R squared score from 0 0.906 to 0 0.928. All right, so that will sum up today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.